Yes, people, welcome back to the YouTube channel, man. I hope you guys are blessed and having a good day. And today's video is going to be another Football Manager 23 tactic that is absolutely cooking with these smaller teams. It's really got these underdogs having crazy underdog stories, man. But before we get into that, people, make sure that you're heading over to the Twitch where I'm live Monday to Friday streaming Football Manager at 4 p.m. Guys, the stream's always lit. The vibes are lit. You guys can get song requests going as well. You can put your song request in. And it's lit over there, man. The link is in the description. Head over there now, man. But let's get straight into this video. Okay, and here we are. So this is my current save with Crystal Palace, um, where I am streaming on Twitch, as well as dropping YouTube videos for this. So go check those videos out and check the Twitch, like I said beforehand. But um, currently, you can see, we're currently sitting fourth in the league with Crystal Palace after 20 games. So this is after one transfer window. But we did discover or create this tactic, I should say, towards the end of the first season, which definitely helped us and we're getting loads of results. So what I have done, I have simulated a full season with Crystal Palace without any signings. So let me show you guys that right now. Here we are. This is the Crystal Palace simulated version. So this is the first season with no signings whatsoever. And we can see Crystal Palace have actually finished in the third place with 71 points. Season one, no signings. Squad, and then we look at the goals, we can see um, Edward was the top goal scorer, and then Mateo after. Those are the only two players who get above 10 goals. Then if you look at the assist, we can see Chris Richards, who was playing that right wing back with 13 assists, Zaha picking up 12, Elise picking up 10, and Eze with nine, and Tyreek Mitchell on the left with eight, man. So now if we actually go to the Premier League table and we can see Crystal Palace losing nine games this season, two at home, seven away from home, then eight draws and 21 wins, 25 goal difference, 71 points. So two points ahead of Man City. Man City had a shocking season. And Arsenal, four points behind them. And Liverpool absolutely cooked the league with 96 points. But we can see straight away, man like Gaeta with 17 clean sheets. I told you, it is a defensive tactic. Is a tactic for the underdogs. And we can see we picked up 17 clean sheets with our goalkeeper who was joint um, golden boot. Oh, sorry, joint golden glove. I'm saying golden boot, you know. And then let's actually look at some of the statistics. I don't expect to see us in a lot of the statistics, honestly. But maybe fewest conceded. Yes, we are there with 42 conceded across the whole season. Clean sheets this season, 18 in total. Most dribbles made, we won't be there. Tackles won, we won't be there. Possession, we won't be there. Pass completion, we won't be there. Okay, fewest shots against then. 400, fourth. Most shots, four, seventh. Most goals, we came fourth. And most points, we came third, obviously. If we get into the player details, we can see Edward with 17 goals in the Premier League, joint with Tony, Isaac, Oli Watkins. Most assists, we've got Elise and Chris Richards both on 10. That's sixth, joint with Mo Salah. Then we got most shots, no one will be there. Play of the matches, no one will be there. Key passes, oh, Eze actually made it for the key passes. And then pass completion, no one will be there. Tackles one, no one, most dribbles. Zaha made it, I weren't expecting to see that either. Clean sheets, obviously, Gaeta with um, 17, joint first. He was conceded, he came second. He conceded 31 in the whole season. We go to the actual competitions. Um, Palace came third, knocked out in the fifth round of the FA Cup and knocked out in the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup. So not a bad season for Palace. They're in the flipping Champions League. It's a flipping great season, bro. I'm sure their objective was to avoid relegation. So to finish in third without signing anyone, that's beautiful stuff, isn't it, mate? But I have also simulated a full season using West Ham. So let me show you guys how they managed. West Ham after one full season and we can see straight away that they have actually finished in sixth place, which is very good for West Ham. They are in the Europa League. They are not complaining at all, man. Personally, I would, I ain't complaining about that. We did not sign no one once again. This is the same squad that starts at the beginning of the game. We're going to look at the squad numbers and see who's been bagging and scoring a lot of goals, man. And we can see Skamakar with 32 goals, meaning he was their most prolific striker, clearly. Underneath him with less than half, Jared Bowen. Man like Kurt Zuma picking up 14 goals, you know, from the set pieces, man. 
Um, four nows picking up 14. Danny Ings with 13. Suchek with 12. That's weird because how deep Suchek is even playing. But wait. Um, then Paquetta with 12 as well, man. And if you look at the assist, obviously you've got Jared Bowen with 26 assists. Paquetta with 15. Um, Kufal with 14. Declan Rice with 11 as well then. Ben Johnson with 6 and Cresswell with 6 as well. And then we go straight to the Premier League table. Obviously, you can see that West Ham have finished in 6th place with 11 losses, 9 draws and 18 wins. 2 losses again at home and the rest were away from home. And crazy result, 5-0 against Arsenal. Jesus, 5-0 against man united yeah it's not easy is it but then if we look at the competitions and what west ham have won we can see that they did finish in sixth place some of you may have wanted a top four finish 11 points behind but west ham have won the europa conference league obviously with palace palace were only playing premier league fa cup and carabao so to be in another competition still come top six and win the conference league i think it's been a flipping great season for West Ham either way they were going to Europa League but they actually have done it the board expectation was to qualify for Europa and they have done that and also picked up the Conference League as well man losing in the FA Cup semi-final to Brighton and losing in the Carabao Cup quarter-final to Man City so loads of finals semi-finals quarters and late stages man they've done well this season now it's time for me to show you guys the tactic but before we do that and get into that guys please I'm asking you guys to make sure that you hit that like button. If you don't know how much it actually does for the channel and what it does for the video, it does help push me out on the algorithm. And if you want to help me and you want to see me grow and you want to support the channel, please, guys, I would appreciate a like, comment, make sure you're subscribing, turn on the notification bell and all of that goodness, man. But let's get into what you guys are actually waiting for, the tactic. And here we are with, obviously, this is my save, innit? So this is my save, people. But here we are with the 4-2-3-1. And it looks bog standard, if I'm honest. However, some of the instructions and what we're telling the players to do make it different, man. So we've gone straight away with a sweeper keeper on defend. And we have told him to tackle harder. Then we have a wing back on support. And we have told him to cross aim to the center. Then we have two ball playing defenders with no further instructions on defend. Then we have a wing back on on attack on the right with cross more often and cross aim to the center so this wing back will look to go to the byline because he's on attack so he we want him to cross more because he's going to keep going for the byline whilst um tyree mitchell will kind of hold back a bit as he's on support so that's the kind of idea i've gone with there and anyways we've got a dlp on defend in the dm position paired with a ball winner midfielder on defend in the DM position as well. So the double pivot right there. Then we have an inside forward on attack on the left. You've got an inverted winger on attack on the right. And then we have a shadow striker on attack in the number 10. Then we have a pressing forward on attack up front. And that is literally it for the player roles and instructions. So a lot of you guys like to ask what is the tactical style sometimes. The tactical style is obviously clean slate and then we put in our own instructions. So then we go with the mentality. So the mentality is a cautious mentality. I did play with this a few times. I thought cautious is a bit too defensive, but it has been working very well, especially for Palace and, like I said, the underdogs. So I was thinking to use a balanced, but I decided to go over cautious and it's done absolute bits. Then in possession, we've kept it very, very simple. We're playing out of defence. We're working the ball into the box. Passing direct in the standard. Tempo higher. That's it. Done. Moving straight on to in transition. And for the first time, people, for one of my tactics, we have actually turned off counter press. So there's nothing on. Usually, you know me, I always got counter press on. But there's nothing on. And the only reason I've done this was because the team just weren't good at counter pressing at all. They were losing their shape. No one knew what they needed to be. Would run out and then we're getting bopped. It's going straight past players. Players are allowing players to run past them and whatnot. So I said, you know what? Let me just take it off. Because we was literally getting cooked by everyone. So I thought, clearly we can't press. So let's just stop trying to force the press. Well, the counter press at least when we've lost the ball. So yeah, man. 
But then we still kept counter when um, position... So we still have kept um, when possession has been won that we counter. Then we distribute the ball to the full backs and the centre backs and we throw it long. Then we go to our possession. We've gone with a high press. So obviously to try and prevent the short goalkeeper distribution. And then the trigger press we've kept at standard. Kept our defensive line at standard. And that is literally the tactic, man. Let me know what teams you guys are going to try it with, obviously. Let me know what other tactics you would like to see. And like I said, don't forget to follow the Twitch, follow the TikTok, and follow my Twitter page, people.